The Church of Scientology is the famous or infamous American-born religion created by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard and best known for its celebrity followers like Tom Cruise and John Travolta. The church claims millions of members here in the United States and around the world in virtually every major city, London, Berlin, Tel Aviv, Johannesburg and more. Scientology is famously litigious, with a phalanx of lawyers keeping an eye on journalists, writers and media companies who set out to cover the church. But now that a number of high-profile and highly placed members have left and are beginning to tell their stories, we're getting rare insight into the inner workings of the church from Pulitzer Prize-winning author Lawrence Wright. His new book is called Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood and the Prison of Belief. His last book, The Looming Tower, is considered the seminal work on the rise of Al-Qaeda, and that's the work for which he won that Pulitzer Prize. But before I ask him about Going Clear, Here's what the Church of Scientology has to say about it. Lawrence Wright's book is so ludicrous it belongs in a supermarket tabloid. The book is an error-filled, unsubstantiated, bigoted, anti-Scientology book. Lawrence Wright, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Christian. How does it feel to be introduced with that very clear denunciation? Bigoted, unsubstantiated, unfair? Well, I, first of all, I sure hope we sell it in supermarkets. That would be great. Um, I have tried to be as fair to the church as I can. And I've you know, interviewed more than 260 people, uh, most of them Scientologists or former Scientologists. Many of them have been at the highest levels of the church and at the highest level of their spiritual ladder. So I think I've spoken to the experts. You called your book Going Clear. Right. What does that mean? Is that the heart of the faith? It's, it's the essential idea. In, it started in Dianetics, uh, a book that Hubbard published in 1950, in which he stated that there are two minds in our bodies. One is the rational thinking mind that is a perfect computer. It's, it remembers things flawlessly. And then there's another mind called the reactive mind. And it's full of the fears and neuroses that control our behavior and cause us to do things wrongly. And those things come from experiences we've had in the past, even in past lives. And if we can bring those things to the surface, those memories, and purge them of the power they have over our behavior, then we eliminate the reactive mind and we go clear. Your subtitle is The Prison of Belief. Right. What do you mean? What is Scientology? Is it a prison? Is it a religion? You know, you and I can talk about religion, but there's only one organization that makes the distinction, and that's the IRS. And they determined in 1993 uh, that, uh, that Scientology was a religious community. That obviously came after a huge amount of effort by the Scientologists. And indeed, we have some video that shows the current leader mm -hmm. celebrating many years ago when the IRS made this announcement and this right. decision about Scientology. The IRS issued letters recognizing Scientology and every one of its organizations has fully tax exempt. The war is over. The war is over. I mean, it really is an us against them yeah. sort of attitude. You know, when that happened, the church owed a billion dollars in back taxes. It had decided not to pay its taxes and it didn't have a billion dollars. This was an existential moment for the church. And so in order to save Scientology, David Miscavige, the figure you just saw, the leader of the church, uh, launched 2,300 lawsuits against the IRS, individual agents. They hired private investigators, according to my sources, to follow uh, individual agents around. Uh, at conventions, they would see who drank too much, who was fooling around on the road. Uh, and all of that is part of the deal that the IRS made those lawsuits were dropped, the private investigators were dropped, and the religious exemption was granted. On whatever merits, that was the circumstance. And why was religious exemption important to the church? It could not exist without it. Uh, you know, they, instead of owing a billion dollars, they paid 12 million dollars, and since then, the unbelievably great protections of the First Amendment of religious freedoms uh, surround the church and all of its practices. I'm not questioning the beliefs of the church. It's the behavior inside the organization. Did you talk to husbands and wives, parents and children who had been separated? Oh, yes. And it's, I mean, there were a lot of tears in this story. The number of people that have 
told me about family members that have turned against them that will never speak to them again. The fear that I've detected in my sources about whether they should talk to me because what's at risk is their relationship with people they love the most and they want to talk about it and many people did talk about it placing those very relationships at risk. This is the response about the separation from right. family members. The church encourages and helps its members to have excellent family relationships whether they're relatives of Scientologists or not. Family members of Scientologists are always welcome to visit the church, to meet other Scientologists, and to have their questions about Scientology answered. I, I would like to introduce them to the hundreds of family members that are unable to contact the people that were closest to them. I'm talking children and, and who have been separated from their parents, husbands from spouses. It's, it's a broad and, and terrible program. The niece of David Miscavige has left the church after yeah. many, many years. And she's been talking publicly, she's written about it. Has that affected the church at all? Jenna Miscavige Hill and others founded a website called exscientologykids.com to talk about this phenomenon of family members being forcibly separated and also of children, the exploitation of children. Uh, I think it's been a disaster in terms of public relations for the church to have people that are close in to the founders and, and also to David Miscavige actually publicly turn their backs on the church. Not so much against Scientology, but the way the church is being run now. Well, let's talk about the powerful adherents and the very famous ones, Tom Cruise, John Travolta. I mean, you can ask for hours why this is attractive to them. Right. But beyond that, do you think they have a responsibility to, I don't know, what is their responsibility? Christian, I've thought about uh, how Scientology might be able to reform itself, uh, how it might be able to change. It's obviously in a critical moment. Some of these celebrity members, in particular Tom Cruise, uh, who is the most notable Scientologist, could call for change. He, I think, has a moral responsibility. I'm not criticizing his personality or his acting or anything about it, but I'm just saying that the product that he sells, and he's the most visible spokesperson for the church, has some problems. And I think it's up to him, since he's representing it to so many people around the world, he's got a moral responsibility to look at what's going on and in his name is being sold to people around the world. When you decided to write the story for your magazine, The New Yorker, what was the editor's reaction? What was Scientology's reaction? Did they try to stop you? Did they try to sue you? What happened? Well, we went into this with our eyes open because many previous reporters have had difficult experiences with the church. Uh, Time magazine, for instance, published an expose in 1991 and the church sued Time, losing at every step of the way all the way to the Supreme Court, but it was the most expensive suit Time ever defended. Other reporters had been tracked down by private investigators, framed for crimes they didn't commit. Uh, you know, these are well-established facts. And uh, so we, we, we looked at that. On the other hand, this was a great story. This was a really interesting phenomenon, and we wanted to do it. Uh, but we do it very carefully. Have they come after you? Have they tried to sue you since the book has been out? No. I, you know, we've had a number of stern letters from attorneys from the church and some of the prominent people mentioned in the book. But in this country, you know, we're protected by the First Amendment, as is the church. But you just said they, they, they lodge many, many lawsuits. Yeah. Well, I think that in order to sue me in this country, they have to prove actual malice, which means that I deliberately misrepresented the facts in order to smear the church. And I have not done that. So now you've written the article, you've written the book. After doing all this work on Scientology, after really immersing yourself in it for so long, what is your conclusion? I think Scientology is having at a reckoning point. Um, it reminds me of the Church of Latter-day Saints in the 19th century, which uh, was the most persecuted sect in our history. That's the Mormon Church. That's the Mormon Church. And um, in fact, there was a bill in Congress to exterminate the Mormons. It was a very hated organization. And it turned, it evolved 
into a, an organization that now can have two Mormons running for president. Uh, the uh, Scientology might have a future like that, but it won't if it continues on its current path. It's got lots of money and it's got lots of lawyers, but it appears to be hemorrhaging members. And if it doesn't have a change, if it doesn't have a reformation inside it, then no matter how much money and how many lawyers they have, it's going to die. Lawrence Wright, thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Chris John.